So Katie says, I have a couple that is able to articulate their feelings and needs and share attachment needs and longings, but it doesn't seem like the pursuer is softening towards the withdrawer. The wife is a withdrawer and she cries every session and she expresses how she feels like her husband is critical of her and she wonders if he even likes her. He does not respond with empathy and just comes back with remarks about how hard he tries to be understanding and helpful. This causes the wife to withdraw more because it feels critical. How hard he tries feels like a defense mechanism to me. It feels to me like you need to actually help this husband go closer to his inner world so that when he responds to her, he's responding with primary and more limbic openness rather than anything that feels like a criticism to her. Granted, she might be overly sensitized to his criticism. So we want to add her possible over highly sensitized, overly sensitized demeanor or persona into the equation, but she didn't get overly sensitized for no good reason. That means she's been facing constant or regular criticism. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so even when we add that potential element in, we still need to help him really do the intrapsychic work to be able to lead with his softer feelings. He's got to find his empathy for her. Mm. He can't just say, I, I'm doing, understanding, understanding isn't helpful. enough. Yeah. And trying to be helpful isn't enough. I, oh my gosh, I so wish it would be enough. Yeah. You know, if our loved ones could build emotional bonding moments by taking out the trash, that would be amazing. Right. But being helpful behaviorally won't scratch the emotional longing itch. We actually want him to articulate less and feel more. Right, right, right. And yeah. to not bring her any closer to her vulnerabilities until he can be more open, less defensive. I hope my frame on his defenses might fit, but... That's when I had to write it down how he tries to be helpful. It's just like, I'm doing what I can do. Isn't that enough? And the truth is behavioral, helpful behaviorally isn't enough emotionally. Right. So if I am him and, uh, and the husband and you're the therapist and you say what's happening on the inside for you, husband, and I say, I'm helpful, I'm understanding, then in the present moment, you what would you do? You would... I would say, husband, you're helpful understanding, right? I'm closing my eyes because I've got to take that in because I've got to feel and help you find the emotion in that because your wife is saying, I need a soft place of connection. I need a tenderness. I need to feel like you're with me and I'm with you and we're in this together. We need to have bonding moments. And husband, when you say I'm helpful and I'm understanding, help me know the sensations in your body. Where's the tension? What, what do you feel? Because we actually have to get him like below because in this quick moment of this little role play it's like he's here and we need to get him to drop down and to feel the totality like all that data coming 80 percent of that data is informing him from his gut from his viscera we actually need katie to help him get in touch with his deeper feelings i see so you what you, i think what you just did is you re sort of passed the wife's stance by the husband yeah Whatever she said, you you repass that so that he has that cue. He has come alive inside of him. He doesn't go there. He's helpful and he's understanding. And then after you repass the cue, then you start to say, I we need you to talk more about what's happening on the inside, your sensations what comes alive right now. Like I, I think I would have to reflect to this lovely husband. I think you're bypassing your body just when you need the data from your body the most, because your coping strategy is to go to your head and talk about how helpful you've been. Ah, yes. You know, when you process comment about what he is conjecture about what he's doing. And his helpfulness is lovely and great. And it is something. I don't want to take anything from you, lovely husband, but it won't ever scratch the emotional longing itch. Love. And that's what all love relationships need is that ability for you to send an emotional ping. It's interesting because did, did I hear it right that Katie's describing him as a pursuer? The wife is a withdrawer, yeah. So this is interesting because male pursuers, one, can often be loud and, and look on the on the surface as abusive. This male pursuer is where is where does where is his anxiety gone? And I would want to help him find his anxiety again. Is he a burnt out pursuer, which means he's detached from his anxiety? So because the the at the heart of pursuit is anxiousness. Yeah. 
and clinging and seeking reassurance, closeness, and connection. Mm-hmm. But maybe that has worked against him. And so I would want to find his anxiety because that's the body data that I feel like I don't have in my hands, even in this conversation, like what is happening wow. inside for him. That's the missing spot. That's for the me and spot. listening. Yeah. yeah. That's the kind of yeah. His anxiety. And so he tries, he says stuff to his wife, but she feels criticized. Like, I'm afraid he says stuff in too secondary of a way, too defensive of a way, which makes it seem like she's the problem. And she's the one that's just needing to do it differently or accept him for how he is helpful and understanding. Right, right, right. And so you're not trying to get that empathy. You're not like, I mean, in a way you're getting, I think part of the presenting problem for Katie is that she can't get him to feel empathy for her. And you're saying, I think that once you get him into his body, which is the block, he's in his head. We don't have empathy from our head. No, no. No, Because empathy from our head is understanding. I hear you. I understand you. Empathy from the body. True empathy has to come from the body because it's a felt sense. I see. And I think I would put curiosity somewhere between the head and the heart. The understanding of the cognition and the head, the heart of the body of empathy and curiosity is a way to get from my head to my heart. Let me be curious. Let me be. Got it. Got it. I made that up. I don't know if it it. fits. I think now it's like, yes. It's done. (laughs) But yeah, if if we have a head pursuer, a person in his head, he's prided himself on his understanding. I'm sure he's very smart, but that's not going to feel like any, there's nothing to connect with. Mm -hmm. Then we've got to teach him how to be curious on his way to finding his empathy, which is what the bottom up work, the actual do the process of helping him find his anxiety again and where he put it all and where does it live on the inside and how far away is it? Yeah, I love that. And it's reminding me of what you've said before, that it's this, like, when you talk about the same pipes, like the pipes for his anxiety are the same pipes for the empathy, the same pipes for sadness and fear, all of that. And so if he's not in those pipes, if we're not moving through those pipes, then, but yeah, but just to back myself up, you're, as the clinician, if you're Katie, you're not saying you need to have empathy. You're sort of coming at it through just emotion in general, curiosity first. If I'm Katie, I might say to him, I I think I've heard myself say this before to the client, I want to come alongside so that together we can find your empathic reservoirs. Together we can find, help you be in touch with your own humanity, which will inform your empathy for your wife's humanity. We want to do this together. I've got to help you. Or even in a more intense moment when he might have sent a bullet, I was like, wait, 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 I got to slow you down. I've got to help you find your empathy and respond from that empathic place. Remember, Jen, you've heard me say before, even if I'm running a few minutes late in a long clinical day, I have to make sure that I'm starting each and every session from that place of empathy on the inside of me. Yes. Because that empathic responsiveness is the foundation of all of EFT. And so we have to go find our empathy and shift our responses to our loved ones, to our clients, to whomever from this place of empathy on the inside of us. And, and Katie might need to help this man go find his reservoir or his well or his pocket of empathy. Mm, That's great. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is, yeah, it is helpful. And I mean, it is helpful. So I'm just thinking that we have to find our body. Yeah. We have to find our inner world. We have to lo- locate what's happening on the inside. Mm-hmm. And with all of that, we, we sort of pivot to that empathy place once we're in our body. This is where Magda Arnold's research of assembling emotion tango move to the cue, the trigger, as you said. Yeah. And then the rapid appraisal all about safety or the lack of safety. And then the third response is body. The third element of emotion is body response before the fourth one of making meaning. I'm afraid he's trying to skip the body response elements of emotion. Mm -hmm. And that's where Katie could say that to him. Like, right. I've got to help you make contact physiologically. Because that's where emotion lives. For more hot tips on emotionally focused therapy, go to theeftcafe.com and sign up for our newsletter where you will receive short little clips like the one you just watched.